Who is Julia? What? She's more important than my son's birthday, right? Oh, I've never been taken to such a fancy hotel. You've got it all wrong, don't you? Are you trying to play me for a fool? I will tell you the rest of the scary story. A true horror story. My name is Hannah. I'm 43 years old, a part time housewife. My family consists of my son Robbie, who will graduate from elementary school this year, and my husband Ian, who is a commercial food salesman. What's going on? I told you three months ago. Today is Robbie's birthday, and we are going to celebrate it as a family. I've already prepared Robbie's favorite beef stew and fried chicken, and now you're suddenly on a business trip. Robbie is going to be a middle school student next year, and he will be busy with his school activity, so we won't have time to spend time together as a family. Moreover, he is at the age when kids start to rebel. I may not be able to cook for my son's request and celebrate with the whole family anymore. It's been 12 years since my husband and I have become parents. My husband wanted a drink, so I went all out and got him a bottle of champagne. And now he is suddenly going on a business trip. I told you I'm sorry. I'm not going there because I want to. It's my job. I can't forgive my husband for making a face that said, He's really annoyed with me, even though he is apologizing. If you are a father, you should put your family first. I'm a father. I work for the sake of our family. I know that, but you have to keep your word. Isn't that what a man is supposed to do? You should consider my situation. A husband's job and his position is important to our family. I understand that, but I know. I can't stand your attitude that I have to put up with you. Am I the only one who cares about our son's birthday? My husband says this to me with a frustrated look on his face. Okay, I will be home early. I will get someone to take over and we'll switch shift. I will be home in time for dinner. Are you sure? Yeah, I will do my best because it's Robbie's birthday. Thanks. I'm really glad you understand. I'm sure Robbie would be happy. Today's birthday party was going to be unforgettable. I thought it would be, but my hopes were dashed. That evening, I received a message from my husband that made me sigh. I can't make it. I won't be going home today. I was looking forward to it. Oh my god! What about the champagne you and I were supposed to drink together? Give me a break. They can't replace me in my line of work. What? You can't replace a husband or a father either, though. I was disappointed, and my son came up to me. Are you alright, Mom? Robbie, I'm sorry. Dad said he had to work. I know, I don't care. You don't have to be depressed. I thought he was just a kid, but he's so thoughtful. Unlike my husband, he's grown up to be a kind man. I know. Work is important, and sometimes you have to prioritize it. We can't make a living if we only put our family first. I've been selfish. I'm sorry. I'm sure my husband works hard and puts up with a lot. Let's put the food in the fridge for now and eat it when dad's around. What? But that's what you wanted to eat today. It's too much for just the two of us. You don't want to prepare it and then have to clean up the leftovers, right? Yeah. I will apologize to dad later. But let's go to your favorite restaurant, mom. I want to go to a nice restaurant. I really love my son. Robbie. Thank you. I will make a reservation at the place you've always wanted to go, so I called another restaurant at the fancy hotel. It's a famous hotel used for weddings and special events. Despite the short notice, they welcomed me with open arms when I told them it was my son's birthday. Robbie, they said they can prepare a small course for children. Don't do that. 
I can eat the same amount as you. Like a full course meal? I'm sure I can handle it. But just tell me the order of the silverware. I make an okay with my fingers for my shy son. I feel sorry for him because my husband had to go to work. But let's make today a happy day, shall we? After getting dressed, my son and I headed to a fancy restaurant we had reserved. To tell the truth, I'm a little nervous too. Have we ever taken the time to eat out in a relaxed way since the birth of our child? I tried to take my son's likes and dislikes into consideration. Adjusted the amount of food for myself so that I could eat as much as I could. And ordered food that would be safe even if it got cold. I miss those days. It's a good memory now. The restaurant we arrived at was spacious and stylish. The night view from the window was the main selling point of the restaurant. But since we were in a hurry, our seats were near the wall near the entrance. My son, who was seated in a luxurious looking chair, looked restless. While I was smiling at him, I saw the figure of someone that I had seen before. Hmm, looks like my husband. No, 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 no way. I thought I might have seen it wrong because we were sitting far away from the window. But, but when I saw his profile, I was sure. It's my husband. He said he was on an urgent business trip despite his son's birthday today, which made my blood run cold. Why would my husband be here? And who was that young woman who was sitting with him? Hey, Robbie. It's bad manners to slump on your chair in a place like this. Sit up straight. Okay. I can't let my son be sad on his birthday, so he must not know. But why? Why? I want to ask him right now. He's on a business trip. He's having an affair. He's having dinner with a young woman in a fancy hotel restaurant. Mom? What is it, Robbie? What's wrong? Are you okay? I'm sorry, I guess I was just a little nervous. Yeah? Me too. I'm looking forward to the Foucault's. I'm looking forward to the Foucault's too. I put on a big smile and tried to enjoy the Foucault's meal, even though it was tasteless to me. Many times, I see the profile of the husband, laughing happily, holding the woman's hand, touching her hair. I hope he doesn't notice me, and I'm angry why I'm so frightened. I'm full. That was so delicious. Yes, it was. Good. Sorry about your dad, but you had a great birthday, right? I could only nod to his smiling face. You lied to me about going out, Ian. Do you have a woman who comes before your family? Since when? I swallowed my doubts. Pay the bill and run out of the restaurant. Mom, look out! I bumped into someone and fell on my butt. I feel so sad and pathetic that I hit someone and fell down in such a hurry that I couldn't see anything around me. Are you alright? No, I'm sorry for not looking ahead. You were just eating at this restaurant, weren't you? Yeah, I was. The man who bumped into me gave me his business card. Um, it's nothing suspicious. I'm worried about your injury, and I was wondering if I could talk to you. That's too suspicious. Um, um, thank you for your concern. Excuse me. I took his card and left as if to run away. It was my son's birthday. We went to a fancy restaurant. Even had a full course meal. I don't know if I've ever had such a bad day. After I came home and my son went to bed, I sat alone in the living room and thought to myself, what am I going to do now? I can't just stay silent. What has he done? He broke a promise, wasted my cooking, lied to me about a business trip, took a stranger to a fancy dinner. I'm so angry. You've got to be kidding me. I will never forgive you. I'm not going to go crying to you. You can't run and hide from me. 
and I will make sure you won't get away with it. About a month later, I think. I was not feeling well due to stress and lack of sleep, but I tried to live as normally as possible for my son. That day, after dinner, my son said something a little unusual. Mom, I want you to tell me a scary story. A scary story? I have to tell a story for a book club event. Each person has to tell one scary story at a time. Yeah, that's it. My husband was playing a video game on his phone, and he butts in our conversation. I know. I used to love it. School ghost stories were popular. Okay, then tell me a scary story, Dad. What? That's a bit sudden. I can tell you a scary story. It's very, very scary. But will you hear me out? Yes. My son nodded with a twinkle in his eye. I don't want you to lose sleep. How could I? I'm in the sixth grade. I started telling him my favorite scary story. It's about a family in a town. A family of three. An honest dad, a kind man, and a healthy little boy. They are very close and always together. They always play together. And go shopping together. They always eat and sleep together. One day, the three of them went out as usual. Today, they were going to play at the park, eat lunch, go shopping, and come back home. It was supposed to be a fun outing as usual, but the boy noticed something on the way. There were supposed to be three in the family, one more than the other. But there were four, including him. For some reason, mom and dad don't seem to notice. Who are they? Who is the girl with a family of three? Why don't mom and dad notice? The boy asked the girl timidly. Hey, what's your name? Me? My name is Celia. Go! Oh! My son is looking blankly next to my surprised husband. It's scary, isn't it? No, I wasn't scared. It looked like you were scared. You were scared, Dad. What? Well, because why on earth would you do that? I went to my son, ignoring my husband, who was so wide-eyed with surprise. Robbie, you have school tomorrow, so why don't you take a bath and go to bed? Okay. I asked my husband again after making sure that our son had left the room. So, who is Julia? Julia? She's more important than Robbie's birthday, isn't she? What? Huh? Oh, I've never been taken to a fancy hotel like that. Huh? Huh? What? My pale husband said that in a dazed voice. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you've mistaken me for someone else. I was hoping he would admit it and apologize, but he couldn't. You're a pathetic man to think you can get away with it when you've been exposed so thoroughly. Listen, there's more to that scary story I told you. What? What? A sequel? Would you like to hear a true horror story? What? The girl named Julia is involved in that family of three, but she has a secret. She's actually engaged to the heir to a big company. They have promised to keep their relationship pure until they get married. But even so, why is that? It seems that Julia is pregnant. That's a lie, right? Julia insists it's her fiance's child. That's impossible. Since their engagement is still intact, the fiance's side is trying to get the family and the company involved. They are suing to get a DNA test to identify the father, claiming it's a huge problem. What? My husband looks at me in a cold sweat and a pale face. I didn't know. I didn't know that. What should I do? Help me! Don't touch me. I swat his hand off. Look, I'm sorry. 
See? We are like the close family in the story, right? Julia is just a girl who had a little fun with. With just a little fun, you would make the girl pregnant? You are not my husband anymore. You are not even family. Don't get jealous, because I am done with Julia. No, I am not jealous. He laughed his ugly face off. I wonder what I have ever liked about him. But I am so disgusted with my husband. Hey, want to hear the climax of a scary story? You got more? There's more. The end is the best part of a scary story. No, no, no. Well, it's a scary story about a family. That was supposed to be three, but turned into four. But before you knew it, there are actually five of them. Huh? Huh? Is this fifth person a friend or foe? He's hiding somewhere. Hiding. Hiding. He's in the family's house. No, no. Are you kidding me? I'm scared. At that moment, the door to the guest room from the living room slammed open. My husband was stunned. Who is this? Good evening. I'm sorry to bother you. I'm Vance. Julia's fiance. I was greeted politely by the man, who I bumped into on my way home from a fancy restaurant. Mr. Vance was following his fiance that day, after he found out she was cheating on him. He saw his fiance in the restaurant, but was hesitant to enter. I was in a hurry, and that's when I bumped into him. The next day, my son said to me, You bumped into him. Don't you? I think you should apologize properly. I felt sorry and called him using the number on his business card. Mr. Vance was glad to hear from me. I'm sorry to tell you, but my fiancé was inside having dinner with another man. He told me what had happened and asked if I could talk to him, if I had seen anything. We connected and I apologized. I apologized for the things my husband had done. Mr. Vance did not blame me and suggested that we settle the matter together as victims. No, 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 that's crazy. You came into my house. I'm sorry I came in here unannounced, but it's nothing compared to what you did. I... I asked him to come over. He was going to help me if you got violent or if Julia came out and caused trouble. Wait, wait, calm down. I don't believe you about the fiancé, and I don't believe you about the pregnancy. Hannah, don't fall for it. You're still running away. Maybe we should ask her. Mr. Vance turns on the speaker function on his phone and makes a call. The person on the screen is Julia, of course. Hello? Julia, it's me. Vance, what's going on? I need to check something. What is it? Julia, you are cheating on me, aren't you? What's going on all of a sudden? There's no way, right? That's terrible. Coming from you, my fiancé. And you're pregnant. I'm not. Of course not. My parents heard it from your mother. Don't talk nonsense! Damn it, Mom! Are you serious about him? No way! I'm your fiancé! This is your child! That's impossible. No, this child is yours! Have you forgotten? She scares me. Scarier than all my horror stories. So, I'm the baby's father and no one else. That's what you have been saying all along. I know they can find out who the father is when you're pregnant. Mr. Vance, are you doubting me? That's terrible. We haven't done anything. The husband was listening, but he couldn't take it anymore. He interrupted their conversations. Julia, is it mine? What? Why are you there? Is it mine? Or is there another guy? No, no! You're the only other guy I'm seeing right now! Oh, now we know. 
Oh, Vance, let's talk about it. Talk to your parents and your lawyer. Bye, Julia. After hanging up the phone, Mr. Vance faced my husband and looked a little happy for some reason. You will receive a letter from the lawyer about the fee for ruining the engagement. Also, our company will contact your company to suspend business. What? Suspension of business? Thank you for your long business with us. Oh, uh, who, who are you? Without answering my husband's question, Mr. Vance finally said with a smile, I'm so glad I didn't marry a cheating woman. You, Julia, and the child can be a happy family of three. I hope you have a long and happy life together. Well, that's the end of the scary story. My husband insisted, but our divorce was finally finalized when my son was putting on his middle school uniform. With the lump sum alimony we received, we rented an apartment and started a new life. My son joined the soccer team. He comes home every day covered in mud, so it's hard to do laundry. My ex-husband, who has lost a big business deal and is a bit of a prior at work, regularly sends me messages of regret. He is constantly complaining about Julia, who is a luxury seeker for spending too much money, not taking care of their kids and so on, and he misses Robbie. I blocked him because I was depressed with his invitation to get back together, saying, You're the only one for me after all. Hannah, would you like me to play with Robbie? Since then, Mr. Vance has come to visit me from time to time. He's kind and reliable, and I'm grateful that Robbie likes him. I'd like to live in peace with Robbie for a while. Hannah, why don't the three of us have dinner at that restaurant? Let's replace those bad memories. I'm going to savor and enjoy the full course meal that I wasn't able to enjoy last time. My husband left me to take care of the twins by myself. When my bump got bigger, he didn't even seem to think of taking care of me. On the contrary, he said, I'm going on a business trip for a week. I can't have that when I'm already busy with the twins. I can't do anything about it. It's my job. This was when I knew. He was hiding something. I looked into it, and sure enough, I found out about his betrayal. After seeing him off on his business trip, I muttered a few words to myself. I hope he comes home safely. My name is Megan. I am 36 years old, and I work from home. I live with my husband Kevin in an apartment. Kevin is five years younger than me, and we met at our favorite coffee shop. We both enjoyed reading. One day, one of the books I was reading caught his interest, and he came over to talk to me. I liked Kevin because he was cheerful and friendly. However, he is younger than me, so I didn't see him as a romantic interest at first. Kevin approached me and repetitively said that he liked me. I eventually fell for his eager approach, and I married him at the age of 30. After marriage, we never had a big fight, and lived peacefully as a couple. But there was something that bothered me all the time. That problem is my inability to have children. We had been trying to conceive a child since the second year of our marriage. There was no sign at all. We went to the hospital together and decided to take a fertility test. As it turns out, there was nothing wrong with Kevin's side. Instead, it turned out that I was the one who had the difficulty. We later underwent fertility treatment, which was physically and emotionally demanding. It was expensive and stressful. Eventually, Kevin got frustrated and started taking it out on me. I didn't resist it because it was my fault that we couldn't have children. One day, Kevin, who was fed up with the fertility treatment, said, 
Why don't we spend the rest of our lives? Just the two of us. But I couldn't give up on our child. I'm begging you. Please, keep with me for a little longer. I really want to have a baby with you. I'll give up when I approach my 40s. Kevin grudgingly accepted my desperate request, and so it went. And so, after a series of fertility treatments, I finally managed to conceive. And I'm super happy, because we're expecting twins. My parents, friends, and in-laws all congratulated me on this pregnancy. I'm so happy. I'm going to raise them well. My relationship with Kevin, which has been strained lately, should be better now. I was thinking of the days I would spend with him and the twins. I'd never raised a child before, but I'd done my homework beforehand and I thought I'd be fine. However, raising twins was much harder than I expected. I can only regret that I was so naive about this. I had heard that the real work begins after the birth of a child. And that is exactly right. First of all, of course, it takes twice as much effort. Breastfeeding, changing diapers, bathing, putting the child to bed, and other daily care for two children is needed. One child needs to be fed 8 to 10 times, but twins needs to be fed 16 to 20 times. In addition, the timing of breastfeeding is not always the same for twins. While I'm feeding one of them, the other one starts crying. And when I feed them, the other one gets impatient. And that repeats all over again. Changing a diaper is the same as breastfeeding. The timing is not the same. And sometimes, while you're changing a diaper, the other one's diaper gets dirty. When that happens, it takes time to get a change of clothes and a new diaper. In addition, children often spit up milk, sweat, and get their clothes dirty from changing diapers. So they need to be changed frequently. Just when you think you've changed their clothes, five minutes later, they're already wetting their pants. And if you're holding them in your arms, even your clothes needs to be washed. This happened ever so often. It takes a lot of time and effort just to change their clothes and wash them. And of course, it costs twice as much to raise twins, which is a huge financial burden. When I think of the cost of buying diapers, milk, and clothes, it's a little discouraging. And they both cry so much at night that I couldn't get a good night's sleep. They cried for a long time, and it was hard to get them to sleep, even if I held them in my arms and soothed them. Just when I thought I could finally get to sleep, one of them would start crying, and the other would wake up. I couldn't sleep properly, and was about to collapse every day. I had to concentrate on raising the twins, so I had to take a leave from my work, though I worked from home. My mother also works and cannot help me with childcare. My mother-in-law lives far away, so I could not rely on her. They say you should rest your body after childbirth, but it was not possible at all. I had just given birth to twins, but I had to struggle on my own. By the way, as for Kevin, he was of no help at all. To be more precise, he was uncooperative from the beginning. When Kevin saw the newborns, his first words were, I didn't know babies look like monkeys. Not cute at all, eh? And laughed. He even jokingly asked me, Are they really my babies? To me, tired after giving birth. My husband leaves all the housework and childcare to me because of his work. When we didn't have children, it was fine. But now that I have two newborns, I'm annoyed that he doesn't try to do anything. When I try to get him to help, he says he can't because he doesn't know how to do it. It's my first time raising kids, so I don't know how to do it either. Even though 
it was his own children. Kevin was somewhat of an outsider when it came to raising them. I've tried to talk to him about it, but it always ends in failure. Kevin, I know you're busy with work, but I'm barely postpartum, and this is the hardest time for raising children. You're a father now, too, so you need to take on a little more responsibility. Can't you come home a little earlier and help me out? Then he turned his head to the side. What? Thanks to my hard work, you can relax at home. Don't you understand that? And you want me to take care of the kids and do the housework when I'm exhausted from work? You're kidding, right? I want to work too. But I can't right now. And I'm not home to relax. I don't sleep enough every night. Why can't you help me a little with the housework and childcare? Kevin had no intention of agreeing and the discussion had no end. Finally, Kevin throws a tantrum and forces to end the conversation. Gosh, I can't even rest at home. You know, I've been through a lot with your infertility. And just when I thought I'd finally be free from those treatments, this happens. If this is what's going to be like, I wish we'd never had kids at all. Kevin spat out those words and went back to his room. I have my head down in despair. Maybe it was selfish of me to want to have children. Unlike me, Kevin didn't really want to have children, and in retrospect, he was reluctant to try fertility treatments. When I think back, Kevin's attitude gradually became colder and colder after I became pregnant and my hyperemesis became worse. He would yell at me angrily if I neglected my chores or was sleeping because I was sick. I felt guilty for putting him through infertility treatment, so I just put up with his verbal abuse. Maybe he'll change a little after the baby is born. Or so I thought. But instead of changing, it just got worse and worse. Our marriage rapidly declined, and we stopped seeing each other, even inside the house. Then one day, Kevin says something unbelievable. We were taking care of one-week-old twins, and yet he was going on a business trip for a week. It's an important job and I can't afford to miss it. I'll be off the phone while I'm away, so please, don't call me. No texts, no emails. No way. Can't you get someone to change? I'm still postpartum, so I can't move much if anything happens. Who am I going to turn to if something happens to the kids? Kevin didn't listen to my desperate attempts to persuade him. What? Don't try to get me to help. I'm working. My husband puts his job first and brushed off my request. But I could tell. He is lying. He doesn't know it, but he has a habit of rubbing the bridge of his nose when he lies. I know this is a woman's intuition, but when he lied about going on a business trip, for some reason, I felt like I couldn't let it slide. I've pretended not to see the petty lies in the past, like cheating on his allowance or going out to the casino when he said he was going shopping. But this time was different. This is about raising our twins. What kind of lie is he telling this time? I'm sure he'll cover it up if I ask him at the moment. I pretended to give up on stopping Kevin from going on the business trip for the time being. Then, until the last minute before he left for his trip, I was checking on something. Bingo! My hunch was right after all. Kevin was hiding something terrible. I'll never forgive him. I'm going to get my revenge. A few days later, Kevin was humming a tune, getting himself cleaned up and in a good mood when he said to me, I'm going on a business trip now. He's very excited to be going to work, but I'm not going to mention it. 
Have a good trip, and I hope you get home safely. What? Did you say something? No, nothing. Just be careful. I whispered the last words, so I don't think he heard me clearly. Though he tilted his head, wondering what I said, Kevin walked out of the house happily. So carefree, not knowing he's going to hell. Well, enjoy it at best. You won't be able to when you get back. While I wait for Kevin to come home, I'm going to finish my preparations. I can't wait to see his reaction in a week. A week passed, and Kevin came home. But he's not the same as he was before the trip. He looked exhausted. His face was covered in bruises. His clothes are also a bit dirty, and he is unsteady on his feet. Oh, I'm home. Man, I'm so tired. Home is the best place for me. Oh, you look terrible. What happened to your face? That bruise. Oh, I just fell. He's rubbing the bridge of his nose again. After all this time, he's still lying. After all, he doesn't know his lie is already revealed. That's when Kevin noticed something strange in the house. What's with all the cardboard boxes? Are you moving or something? The house is full of cardboard boxes with my personal belongings. I told him coldly. The kids and I are moving out. I'm not coming back here. Huh? What the hell are you talking about? I can't stay with a husband who lies that he's going on a business trip and cheats on his wife who has one week old twins. I'm divorcing you and moving out. Kevin's eyes widen in surprise at my statement. He looks a little pale too. And he's yelling at me like, I'm the one at fault. Stop joking, Megan. This kind of harassment is too much. Just because I wasn't cooperative, do you have any proof that I cheated? I showed him a video. There he was, my husband discussing a trip with his affair partner. I'm looking forward to our trip tomorrow. Don't worry, I've got my wife to believe me. You were able to tell your husband as well? That's good to hear. Kevin's face is now pale when he sees the video. Wh when did you... I'm pretty sure you were at the hospital when this happened. I didn't think the camera had ready would have footage like this either, and that's not what it was intended for in the first place. In fact, this is footage from the camera I had purchased for the babies. I was so anxious to be away from my child that I had cameras set up all over the room. I was afraid that if I told Kevin, he would say I was wasting my money, so I secretly bought these cameras with my personal savings. Kevin had told me about the woman before. We have a new employee, Tori Anderson, but she's married. I called his company to confirm his business trip after I saw the footage. Then I found out that Kevin was not on a business trip, but had took some days off. I asked to change to Tori Anderson, and as I expected, he replied that she was also on leave. And so I knew it was Tori, a colleague of work, with whom he was having an affair. I went through Kevin's study, found a note with contact information of employees, and called Tori's house. Tori's husband answered, and when I explained the situation, he was furious. Apparently, he had suspected Tori of cheating on him for a while, and he was just about to investigate. I asked him not to tell his wife about what he had heard. The day before Kevin came back from his business trip, Tori's husband contacted me and told me what had happened. Apparently, Kevin had gone to Tori's house to pick her up and ran into him, and he beat up Kevin on the spot. That's why he had a bruised face. He couldn't possibly go home, so he spent some time in a hotel and finally came home. Kevin couldn't say anything and was just standing in front of me with his mouth hanging open. Then someone jumped in. What are you doing here, mom and dad? It was my parents-in-law, their faces red with anger, who came into the living room. I called them and asked them to watch the video from the camera. In a fit of rage, my father-in-law punched Kevin in the face. He ended up with another bruise on his face. How can you do something so stupid? You're not my son anymore. More yelling, 
came from behind me. I'm taking my daughter and grandchildren home. Such an unbelievable man. He's the worst. Oh, mom and dad. I actually had my own parents over to help me prepare for the move as well. My mom was hugging the kids and glaring coldly at Kevin. My father-in-law had tears in his eyes as he slapped Kevin in the face and cursed at him for being such a stupid son. Kevin's complexion was terrible as he was surrounded by both of our parents. And there, I dropped another bomb on him. Oh yeah, I called the president of your company. That you were having an affair with a married woman on your days off. They've already found out about it. When Kevin heard that, he yelled at me. You've got to be kidding me. What the hell? Then my father raised his fist in the air and yelled back at him. You've been cheating on my daughter, and now you're acting like this. You have a problem with my daughter? I'm sorry, sir. Kevin had no way out and got down on the floor in front of me. Please, Megan, the devil made me do it. Please, don't divorce me. I'll leave Tori, and I'll help you with the housework and childcare from now on. Kevin pleads desperately, but my heart won't budge. It's just annoying. So I bluster out. What the hell are you talking about? You didn't even stand by me when I was going through the worst time of my life. Do you have any idea how hard it was for me to take care of the twins by myself and take care of the house? And you're on a trip with another woman? You must be really proud of what you've accomplished. Please, don't say that. I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart, so... Don't make excuses. I've run out of love for you. I can't possibly be married to you from now on. You will never come near me, or my children again. And I will charge you alimony and child support. I left him there, and we all left the apartment together. Later, Kevin and I divorced. I filed for alimony against Kevin and Tori for cheating on me, and of course, child support from him. Kevin was given a stern warning by the company, but he resigned voluntarily because he couldn't stand the eyes of his colleagues. Kevin owes me alimony and child support, plus the alimony demanded by Tori's husband, and he is now $100,000 in debt. He now works day and night, exhausted from manual labor. Tori also divorced her husband, quit her job, and moved back to her parents' house in the countryside. Her husband and I are suing her for alimony, and she is now working at a factory under supervision. I went back to my parents' house and am raising the twins with my mother's help. Just seeing the twins grow up day by day makes me happy. They are showered with love from everyone in the family, so the twins seem happy too. I will continue to do my best for the future of my twins.